everyone and welcome to this very special video which has been a long time it's a coming. tour video. It's a tour finally because we have our new games room all set up. And, and we're standing up. We never stand up. <laughs> and we're standing. <laughs> so and now you get to see the height difference which you probably oh, yeah. have never seen unless you've met us in person. First yes, um, but surprise! Uh, little known fact and the thing that people are most surprised about I think when they meet us in person is we are both really quite short. Yeah, you don't like, really have any other reference here. Ma Maggie is taller than me, but Maggie is also short. I'm not like absolutely <laughs> short. Tiny. I'm just like I'm Tiny. just like average. I would say I'm an average human size. Anyway, we digress because this video is all about our new games room and we've mm -hmm. been so excited to reveal that to you because we have been working on it for a really long time. Everyone keeps saying to us, can we have a tour of your shelves? And we're like, what shelves? We don't have any shelves. We have piles of games. We have one sideways thing that was yeah. cupboards of games. Yeah. Games everywhere you could potentially think to find games. There were games in our house. Stacks of games and corners and yep. piles of floors. Yeah. So it's been a bit of an effort to get everything in one place. And actually what you're looking at behind us is around 80% of our collection, I would say. We've still got our little, our usual, where our postcards are and our games are behind mm. us in what you're used to seeing from us. We've still got that set up. So yeah. eventually we'll get them all into one place. But for now, we really like our little postcard area. So We'll yes. probably keep using that for recording, but we wanted to set up something a bit more, well, a, let's say with a, a few more like technical pieces of equipment, like the overhead we were using a bit, was at risk of falling on our heads at all, all, at time. all times <laughs> and a bit less of like quite literally two Tupperware containers with a, oh no. a picture frame over Don't the top. Don't give that away. <laughs> our secrets, <laughs> behind the scenes secrets. Yeah. Our table was not a table. And if you've no. watched from the very beginning of Thinkathema, you will remember when we were filming from weird camera angles, we had no audio and um, it was a, it's a very tiny space, the space we were recording in. We're very close together. The space is, is very, Actually, there's not enough different uh, distance between us and the camera. No. Tiny, tiny space. So we wanted to set something up. But more importantly, even than filming, uh, we really wanted to have a dedicated space for gaming mm -hmm. because yes. so, yeah, we're not always just gaming. We're actually playing the games. Playing games. Because we usually just have to play, obviously, like in our kitchen, like what do you call it, our dining, dining room table, yeah. which, is, which is good. But then it's like, you know, you know that old thing of like you can't, then eat and you have a game set up and then you're like and so and yeah. you certainly can't have more than one game set up and etc no. etc et which we always do so it gives our games a nice little home but anyway we want to mm. give you a little bit of a tour so first let's start with the shelves and it's not a calyx they are it's not, not a calyx, a calyx. No. um they are actually not expensive it's just like fairly actually, cheap buildings yeah, we, we did the maths and the same it would have cost about the same to do the coverage with calyx and then we would have had less flexibility because yeah. it's like they're built the way they're built yes and then there's and then they don't quite fit whereas yeah we just got a local carpenter to like come in and help us Put in some basic yeah. shelving that yeah. is all adjustable. So that's yes. really good because we can have some small game shelves and some larger game shelves. And we thought that would look quite nice um, all at different heights, especially because we're using it for a background mm -hmm. um, for our videos. Yeah. And what else can we tell you about this? Well, of course, the question, the first question that people have will be, how did we organize our games? How did we organize our games? Did, did we, we organize, did our, we organize, our, organize games? our games? We first, when it sort of went up, because we needed to get things off the floor and onto, we just sort of put them wherever they fit. And yep. then it was like, oh, this doesn't feel quite right. We'd seen a lot of different ways of doing it. I love the color coding, but then talking to so people pretty. who have done the color coding, it's like, it's a nightmare the, to maintain. And then also in terms of the sizes mm. of games as well, it's, it's quite tricky. And so we're like, no, that's not it. And publisher, then that is. By publisher. And that's the one actually a lot of our friends who yeah. have big board game collections sort by publisher. It helps because the boxes are usually the same yes. size. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I guess, because we like know some of the publishers, it makes sense in my mind to group them that way. Like yeah. I, I associate them all with a publisher. However, mm. 
we started doing that and you'll yeah. see in little areas that there are groups of games that belong to like there's a little AEG section mm-hmm. over there there's yeah. some Stone Meyer games over there and they kind of are grouped a little bit that way like the sort of Largely. Eagle yeah, Griffin, Griffin Lacerda games yeah, here yeah. it's a bit of Z-Man but yeah. it's not very consistent well, no because sometimes the same publisher will have all sorts of yeah they'll have variation as you'd yeah. want them to and so it doesn't it's not foolproof it, yeah it still didn't quite work so now yeah. it's kind of grouped by vibe. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of vibe, Amy? Well, what kind of, what's like, the vibe? These ones the here, games? a bit lighter, a bit more fun, a mm-hmm. bit more like gateway plus ish. Yeah. yeah. Then we've got lots of heavy games that all happen to be the same size, which is quite nice. That is convenient. Very yes. convenient. But I do feel like we've gone for more serious games together yeah. and lighter, fun, cute games together in a way. Yeah. Uh, but mostly it's fair. <laughs> it's just where things will yeah. fit. I had this, one of the thoughts was like, oh, we could do it by player count. So mm. then you, you know how many people you have. But then it's, even then no. it's like, it's just, there's no consistency in terms of the sizes of box. And so, yeah, this seems so far to be the best way. Yes. I'm going to say not every, we haven't really done a culling video yet. We have not done a so culling video. So not everything that's here not everything that's here is safe so a lot of these games may not <laughs> some games it. we do need to trim and when we were yes. putting them up on the shelf and when we realized that actually we'd built all this new shelving and then very quickly we filled this new shelving mm. there are still games in cupboards there's still games in our other filming area yeah. so there are more than enough games to cover this entire space so we do need to cull some because there are lots of of new ones that are coming in every week mm-hmm. um so certainly we will have to work on the responsible doing thing that. is to really just yeah keep keep it keep the size of the collection i mean manageable. if you can't fit them on this wall you no. probably shouldn't have them i mean this is already some would say a problem yes like a, <laughs> no, a, it's a, a, a well a bad, curated library bad habit it's just a habit it's just a <laughs> yeah but anyways anyway what what are the components um, are well, we going to talk about? Well, I would like to show the top of the shelf, oh. which you can't see right now, but we'll put in some shots um, in the video mm-hmm. because I have the found shelf. a home for my plushies because Maggie and I, um, as I mentioned earlier, are very short and we can't actually reach the top of this shelf. So we thought it would be a great place to put up um, all of the plushies that have mostly been won out of skill testers mm-hmm. in Asia. Uh, predominantly entirely um, I would say I don't uh, think anything... no, there's a couple so there's some root plushies that oh yeah we the have root up plushies. There. yeah they, um, and there's a couple of other ones yeah. I recognize that one because I bought him in Vegas just recently so yeah there's a collection of plushies so up there like 95 percent have come out of a claw machine yeah I, I yeah. actually enjoy that our friends who know that we like board games but not the extent to which we like board games walk into this room and the first thing that they have to digest is the number of board games and they're like oh my goodness and then they look up and it's like oh also plushies yes (laughs) because they haven't really been on view Mm -hmm. like anywhere that's true they've been in in bags yeah but i like it i I enjoy it um and there's some bigger games up there that don't quite fit in the shelves Mm -hmm. as neatly and they're nice to show off as well there's oath and dwellings of eldervale and perseverance and cerebria good good box presents yeah games with uh yeah yeah. yeah, so we'll probably keep those in rotation depending on what we're playing I mean, at the you'll time. never really see them if we're filming because they're too high up, but but we will when we walk into the room. So, yeah, yeah they're more for us, I guess. And, <laughs> and it has already had, like, quite a profound impact on our mm. lives to have a dedicated gaming space because yeah. it makes it... Uh, it gives it a sense of occasion. Our friends, now that they've seen the games room, I feel like they're way more likely to say, can we have a games night? Because mm. it feels like... You're going somewhere, you get to sit down, They and they always sit here and they're staring at the wall and it, I don't know, it, it makes them interested to well, try more I games. I feel like often, like they knew how much into games we were, mm. but because you're usually bringing games to them and it's like, oh, are you pulling out games from somewhere? And it's like, here's a, and they're often like, because it's like the gateway stuff, it's often smaller boxes. When they get to see this, they start kind of, the ones that are going to get into it are like, wait a second. 
what's all of this and what's that one and what's and so that's what's interesting to see because sometimes people will be like attracted to the big boxes Mm. and the because they'll see a bit of a theme on it and they'll be like oh what's that one Mm. about and so it's like oh well you know we can work our way up there yeah well and uh, just stay tuned stay dedicated and you'll find out (laughs) you're not ready yet (laughs) you're not ready yet young one but soon um and the other thing that you'll notice in the shot is this beautiful Mm. gaming table and again we will add some footage in here of the gaming table but i do want to talk about this gaming table because before we decided to get one obviously it's a huge investment to get a dedicated table for gaming a lot of people do use it as well as a dining room table so our table does have the leaves that go on top of it to create a cover Um, but this is by an Australian company called the table flippers Mm. and when I honestly just came across them through my google search when I was looking for an Australian provider of game tables and they make them in Sydney Mm. and it is a wonderful uh, couple uh, Adrian and Ellie who make these beautiful tables they're actually both architects in their day job so they have an eye for design and they've created this beautiful beautiful table and this is by no means, this is not a promotional video. No. Uh, we paid for our table, yes. but I do want to give them a shout out because it is just such, this will last a lifetime. It is solid mm. wood. It is beautiful and it's got the lights on the inside. Yes. Um, they helped us create a bit of a frame so that we could raise the table up a bit higher than this. But when mm. you're just playing with it normally, um, it's got a nice, like it's nice low with felt and, mm. you know, you can hide away the game once it's set up, even if it has has miniatures you can put the top on it yeah and it's quite a bit of a uh, headroom so that yeah. yeah you can if you've got minis doesn't matter you can cover it have another game on top or, yeah yeah so that is beautiful so if you are in that if you're in australia mm. there's not many options for game tables but highly recommend um the table flippers and we'll yeah. of course link to the them below Actually in a, the a, description a carpenter walk through and one thing he said was like that is one impressive board game collection so i was like oh thank you but the other thing was this is beautifully made. So mm. yeah, even obviously like to <laughs> even our untrained with an eye. eye, we're like, this is gorgeous and it just feels so nice. But the trained eye was also like very impressed. You know what I actually the really enjoyed? The, and you know, a lot of game tables have this, but the, the card holder. Yes. I didn't think I would use that so much, but I use it all the time. And every time it's so satisfying, it's like, look, no hands. Yeah. Look, my hands, you can't it, see it, but it I'm is, not holding them. It's nice when also like if you have new people sitting around and then they haven't clued into that that's <laughs> what that's for and then they see and they're like oh and like there's that excitement of like yes let me try <laughs> oh um i had uh you'll probably see it one of the uh the upcoming videos uh i had <laughs> a a stray card there the entire time I'll, I'll leave you to it to put in the comments if you figure out which video uh <laughs> which video it is i only realized it's like because this is what happened right i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna completely digress i i saw that amy had it there before we started filming and i was like oh well then i should have it there for continuity sake and then somewhere between that point and when we actually started filming i mean it's like oh what's this doing there i wish i actually said out loud i was like why would we have that there for the film and it wasn't until I was editing that I'm like where did the other one go why am I the only one with a card in front it makes no sense but yeah, it is. makes perfect sense when you're playing though um, and I do love having that option we also have uh, of course the cup holders which yes. are necessary to stop people from dripping drinks although we are trying to work out the best way to have a hot tea so if yeah. you have any tips on how to keep um, hot drinks clear of gaming um, we have tried all sorts of uh, like sippy cups yeah like keep cups type keep cups. And, and like so now we're on a mission to find the ideal cup that is like long because they're obviously like you know they've got a Quite bit deep. of depth mm-hmm. yeah long skin but also if it's if it's not like a keep cup I think we've been using um, like I have a thermos mm. and that is terrifying if you put hot like a hot tea in there mm. when and it's been keeping it super hot to just drink straight out of it's like this is not going to work as a casual let's just play a game and then just be terrified every time you're going to try and take a sip so we're still on the hunt for uh you know what will be our hot drink solution because we do yeah. like to have a cup of tea yeah. while we play our games and Amy's petrified that people will spill onto the table I mean the table's so new and so and beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> so yeah you... it's terrifying uh yeah. yeah but I guess the only thing to do now is to give you a bit of a tour of the games in our collection so mm. I'll probably just walk over and grab the camera now and then we can show you around all right
Okay, so we're at the shelf. Let's have a look at what we have here. We've got some classics like Jiper, Two Player Goodness, Roller Rights, Fleet the Dice Game, Three Sisters. Got, uh, I love Bonanza. How good of a game is Bonanza? Rolling Rounds, Metro X. And then you can see here games that we've covered like the Guild of Merchant Explorers and Sheepy Time. We've talked about those on Small Talk. Then there's some games that we haven't played yet. The Shelf of Opportunity, Cubitos and Meeples and Monsters have been sitting there asking to be played for a little while. So we've got a mixture of old and new. Some small lighter games like Point Salad, Cat Lady, Dog Lover. We've talked about those on Small Talk. And then we've got some, some of our Stonemaier games collections. The rest are in our little other recording corner. Um, but here we've got Tapestry and then the Viticulture collection. We've got Pax here. And then we've got some other lighter games, Dice Miner, that was a great release, a recent release. Um, Finger Guns, which we picked up um, on our most recent trip to the US. Oh no, I've pushed them in, they've all gone in. They're gone forever ah, now. They're gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've also got some prototypes here. So you can see um, Dice Hospital uh, Emergency Roll there. We've got, and a keen eye will notice, we have Terra Mystica, the big box. Mm. Um, and that big box, uh, we haven't had a chance to get into yet, but Maggie's really excited because it has a solo, uh, dedicated solo mode in the big box, as well as all the expansions. But we're only just getting into Terra Mystica, so um, stay tuned for that. Uh, what else do we have over here? We've got one of my favorite lighter games, Dream Crush, that's always a fun time. We've got Seven Wonders and Splendor two of our most well played uh the boxes are falling apart the colors coming off them and they're barely hanging on they're barely hanging on but it's just a reflection of how much we've played those they were two big gateway games for us so they've been played a lot my city is here which we have gotten about 75 percent of the way through and we still need to finish off but that was something that we started pre-covid and then since um, we've come out of lockdown we haven't had a chance to pick it back up again we've got calico cascadia what have we got chai tea for two another prototype there the Crystal Peaks prototype here. Of course, we'll replace these games with um, the real versions once they uh, are finished and published. But it's really nice for us to look up at our shelves and be reminded of all the fun content that we've made since we've been creating content. This, The Loop, a cooperative game. What are Scandalous. you doing there? One of the few cooperative games that are currently in our collection. You can see Paint the Roses up here is another one. But they, I think, will be pretty lonely on this shelf in terms of, I can't think of the top of my head whether there's any other co-ops on here, apart from Viticulture World. What else do we have here? We've got Hadrian's War, Animal Kingdoms, lots of games we've covered and spoken about. Um, you can see a lot of our two-player games down here. We've got um, Kahuna, one of my favorites. Uh, Lost Cities, the, we've got the crew, ah, co-op, the crew. Mm. Cope alert. Uh, we've got Seven Wonders Jewel. You can see Curse of Court and Just One. Stay cool. Some party games are uh, the Blockus, the controversial controversial Blockus in our household. <laughs> Maggie's not a fan. Um, some smaller box games up here. Teach You, Trick Taking, Good Atama. Uh, then some lighter games here. Maggie's Stardew Valley, Yay! another cooperative game, but mostly oh, yeah. solo in our household. We do have a lot of co-ops sneaking Oh my in. goodness, there's a lot of sneaky co-ops, isn't it? Uh, we've got The Gardens, another prototype. Meadow, which was a, a great game that came out last year. Uh, it's a Wonderful World and It's a Wonderful Kingdom, Empyrean Legends. Uh, some of our favorite Euros here, Lorenzo, Il Magnifico. We've got Coimbra, Clans of Caledonia is a fantastic game, Barrage. And then we start to kind of move into heavier territory. So we've got, of course, the Lacerda games here, as well as Rococo, Arc Nova, Magnate, um, some Uwe Rosenberg. We've got some Splotter games here. Um, down here, we've got yet again more small box games. We have a lot of small box games, actually. Yeah, they do sneak in. They do sneak in. And then it's just like, oh, well, we might as well hang on to them. It's like not really worth reselling them. So we just hang on to them. But... Um, yeah, a lot of good ones here. Innovation, what a great game. Great, weirdest, one of the strangest games in our collection, but I just adore it because it's so unique. Um, we've got Root, which is famously untouched in our yeah. collection. We still have- still see the shrink there. Yeah, you can see the shrink. We've got a lot of the expansions. We've got the base game and they have not been played. So we need to get that to the shelf. That must be our 2022 resolution. Mm. Let's make it happen. Key Flower and Key Flow up here. 
Uh, we've got Crown of Amara, some other classics. We've got Dice Theme Park that just came in as unopened. As we start to move towards this end of the shelves, now we're getting into shrink territory. Um, games that are well and truly in the opportunity um, space. So we've got Fjords, we've got um, the Transcontinental which came in recently. Um, a lot of other games that we have and haven't played, a bit of a mixture here. Wonderland's War, which we um, did a lot of content for actually mm, yeah. this year. We've done the uh, run, through, the, run, yeah, through. run yeah. through on Rado's channel as well as our own review of that when it came in. Um, and then you can see a lot of opportunity. I won't go through all of these, but there's certainly, as you can see, a lot of games um, in shrink that are waiting to happen, including um, Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy, Ooh, which is right down the bottom right and taunting me. Um, and I really want to get that played. But yeah, and then you can see up the top those games and the plushies. But um, that's a little bit of a tour of our collection. We have many more games still in cupboards and in our other little studio. But um, if you have any questions about the games on our shelf, please feel free to drop us a note below. Tell us if there's something in Shrink that we really need to get to the table and something that you want to see reviewed, let us know and we'll try and bump it to the top of the list. All right, and now I'm back on the other side of the camera. And Welcome think, back, Maggie. Yes, and uh, yeah, that's that's the tour. That's a lot of the tour. A that's very a whirlwind the... tour. And yeah, we'll of course continue to talk about our collection as new things come in and mm. as they leave our collection. We're still working a little bit on the studio itself. We want to get some more lighting, etc. But it's always a work in progress. So it's we thought, always, yeah, development's yeah. happening. If yes. we wait until it's perfect to film this, we'll never film this. Correct. So, um, Just have to jump in there yeah. and start and then improve as you go. Yeah. yeah. So please share with us any thoughts on our new game room uh, if you've got any ideas yeah. for how you organize your games or things that we need to get played and off our shelf of opportunity. Or what you use to uh, keep your hot drinks in if you have uh, yeah, drink holders like this. Any tips or tricks, mm. but we would love... Also, if you um, are connected with us on social media, share a photo of your game room because oh, I yes. love seeing them, love getting inspiration mm. and um, we're looking forward to sharing many happy memories here in yeah. our games room and uh, with you all there on the other side of the screen. So yeah. thank you very much for watching and we'll be back with more board game content soon, but bye yeah. for now. Bye.